we're approaching the last harvest of the season. Um, and um, what is this thing called again in English? Opo. Opo, yes. So we're going to harvest one of our last opo. And it's been very fruitful for us this year. We've gotten, like, I don't know, maybe like a dozen of these. So actually probably even more. We had to give them away. Wow, it looks nice. Yeah. We peel the skin, cut it in half. It makes peeling the skin easier. If you harvest this and it's a little bit too old, then you can't really eat the inside. Uh, you just get rid of the inside if it's too hard to kind of uh, bite on the seeds. But if it's young, you can uh, just eat the whole thing after peeling it. I just kind of bit into the seed and it's good. So okay, we don't great. need to uh, yeah. get rid of the inside. This wasn't too big because like this is actually uh, on the small side for the ones we've harvested. We've harvested. I, I would say that if it's like this big, it's too big or like this wide they actually get really big quickly so if we'd waited maybe another few days this might have grown 50 percent bigger okay. you know i'm gonna saute this um, that's because that's the way i like it but it's also very good in soup it makes for um, a nice sweet soup no, even though this is kind of a, um, what would you call this? Like a squash? Yeah, it's, it's actually sweet. It has a nice sweet taste to it. There are different varieties of this too. Oh yeah, uh, we were actually at a friend's house over the weekend and the friend had several different varieties. There was one that was maybe three or four feet um, long. A really long varieties yeah. and one with like, um, like dinosaur egg looking. Yeah dots on it yeah this one uh, the skin is pretty um you know one colored yeah we're gonna try to grow um the long variety next year we actually um we got some seeds from our our, our friend's parents and then they're also going to give us seeds for the, the really long ones okay so now this is pure actually i'm going to go remove this center piece right here so today we're do doing the, the simplest of all the recipes with this vegetable. There are more other complicated recipes. This one's simple and tasty. Okay. So the way I like to cut it is I like to cut it in slices. Mm, that is so fresh. Then I'm gonna take about, I'm gonna cut it in half now, like this. And then I'm gonna cut it, maybe like, I'll just do one group at a time, like this. So each slice has some of the middle part and some of the outside part. Okay, I'm just gonna finish. I'm gonna try one raw. Just I've never done this before, but oh, hang! That was it. It's like a, a very spongy cucumber. Wow, it's wheat. A very spongy, sweet cucumber. Huh? That's cool. <laughs> so, so would you say it's good? Yeah, it's good. Wow, maybe we should just eat it raw. So these, <laughs> this part's kind of small, so I won't cut it in half. I'm just gonna just cut it um, lengthwise. Just leave it. So now we're ready to cook it. So it's really simple. If that's all the prep work that you need. I like to cook it outside, especially in the summer, it gets really hot in our house. 
and since um, our opal is big, we need a big pan, and it's it's best to cook this with high heat. So I'm using my outdoor um, burner. Okay. You can do this inside, um, also on a regular stove. Yeah, but if if you do, um, don't cook too much at at the same time. You know, maybe cook it in small batches. Let that pan get hot. Add a little oil, just once around. Okay, I'm gonna wait that, wait for that to get smoky. Pan is nice and smoky, so I'm gonna add add the opal in. Make sure the heat pretty pretty high, not too high. And then brown a little bit. See this piece right here? It's how it's brown. I want to, I want to wait until all the pieces are like that. So, um, one of my, I guess, techniques for cooking this and similar vegetables is to not um, put any uh, spices or sauces on it until it's uh, almost done cooking. Otherwise, it's going to burn. So that's how I just like to cook it with oil just for right now. So you notice that with the high heat, it's browning very quickly, even though I have a very large pan. You can smell it already. It's, it's a sweet taste kind of emanating from the pan. It wilts a little bit a little bit after cook too. Almost uh, kind of less opaque, more translucent. Yeah. You know, I like to use the wok and just kind of um, shake it so it doesn't damage the vegetables. So, you know, if you use a, a spatula, you might kind of um, bruise the vegetables a little bit. And these are kind of delicate too, especially after they've been cooking for a while. Just want to shake them up every, you know, a few seconds to make sure they're browning evenly. Okay, well, we're going to brown. I'll show you what I'm going to use to season it. We have paprika. Paprika here. Garlic powder. Onion powder. Vegetarian fish sauce. We have some mushroom powder here. Coarse black pepper and some vegetarian mushroom sauce.
So the uh, the vest the opal is rotting and a lot of pieces are getting brown. So it's, it's almost ready for us to season it. Okay, a lot of these pieces, they're nice and brown, and I don't want to overcook it. So now I'm going to start adding um, the seasoning. So I'm going to start with the dry seasoning first, because if you put the wet seasoning in first, um, it's going to uh, burn, and you won't be able to mix it around. So I'm going to start with the dry seasoning. I don't measure anything, I just kind of cover it. I just spread enough seasoning so that the, the surface is covered. That's it. Okay, lastly, the mushroom powder. That's a measuring device. Yeah. So, I've added roughly two teaspoons of mushroom powder. This is what it looks like. Because that one's salty, so you have to be able to measure it. Yeah. So now I'm adding or, the, the vegetarian yeah. fish sauce. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, that's also salty, so. I'm gonna use it very quickly. So it's gonna start to burn. So it's just once a few times around to hold the vegetable with the sauce. Now I'm gonna mix it. You notice how it changed colors fairly quickly. Um, and I wanna keep on doing this because I wanna make sure that the spices and the sauces are evenly distributed. You want to make sure that you keep it moving so that nothing sticks to the pan and gets burned. And then when it, it darkens a little more, we'll know, we'll know that it's ready. Give it another stuff and then do a quick taste. Mmm, very good. All right, we're done. Well, that took about 15 minutes.